Hello and welcome to National Focus. I'm Pearl Fontaine. Thanks for joining us. Topping the headlines, the Ministry of Agriculture updates the nation on the status of the black cicatoka and citrus greening diseases. The Ministry of Tourism close to finalizing a crisis management plan and Dominica bids farewell to Venezuelan ambassador following a 12-year stint. Stay with us for details of these stories and others when National Focus returns. You're watching GIS. Welcome back. The Ministry of Tourism is well on its way to finalizing a crisis management plan which will assist the Ministry in dealing with crisis situations. The draft plan was formulated during a one-week crisis management workshop which came to an end last Friday. The workshop was conducted by Dominican Johnson John Rose, Communications Specialist of the Caribbean Tourism Office the CTO. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, Claudia Bellet, is supporting the draft plan, which she says still needs some fine-tuning. She is optimistic that it will take effect soon. As we speak today, we also have a, a draft, an initial draft of our crisis management plan that we will have to do a little bit of refining of, but um, eventually we will have a, a document that we can use and that will be approved and agreed to by all of the stakeholders. I trust that we will be able to complete this process very shortly so that you know, we can have this document to really use in the short term. And we've also, as we went along, identified some of the resources that we will need in order to really implement this plan properly and to you know, deal with crises. Bellet says the crisis management plan, when finalized, is expected to be of great assistance to the Ministry of Tourism. The crisis management plan, as I said, will assist us in tourism. Um, and it will assist us because we will be able to use it to remind ourselves how do we you know, deal with not only the victims of crises, but also their families and their friends who may be here in Dominica or who may be overseas and how do we communicate to them. The Permanent Secretary had high praise for the participants for the level of interest shown during the workshop. She also had words of commendation for the facilitator of the training workshop. I think that all of you as participants will really endorse my sentiment when I say that he did an excellent job in delivering the training and not just in you know, presenting the material, but in ensuring that we had the practical simulation exercises, which have really left us much better prepared to deal with such situations. Tourism Minister Honorable Ian Douglas thanked Johnson John Rose for the assistance given to the ministry in putting the crisis management plan together. I want to personally thank you, because I believe it was two years ago that we met in New York, and. I think we had a short chat and I was telling you that that is something that we really need in Dominica. And I'm happy that, that eventually um, it could become a reality. And I really want to thank you for keeping your interest and keeping your promise that whenever we needed you to do that seminar, um, you would be ready, willing and available. And I thank you very much on behalf of the people of Dominica because tourism is so important to the people of Dominica and you being a great son of the soil. So I thank you very much. Meantime, Chief Executive Officer of the Discover Dominica Authority, Colin Piper, says the timing of this development plan is noteworthy. This issue is uh, very important to us. Um, as many may know that um, since World Creole Music Festival last year, we've had a number of incidents against uh, uh, visitors to the island. And so the timing of this, of this seminar has been particularly Germain. We have had to deal with some issues and so it's even, uh, I, I believe that uh, should they continue to occur in the future we will be even more prepared not only as an authority but uh, as a destination. And that's important because one of the driving um, growth catalysts for um, in terms of economic activity is the tourism industry 
and we want to ensure that first of all we are um, visitor centric in terms of concern for them but also um, ensure that the destination continues to, to thrive. And communications specialist at the Caribbean Tourism Office, Johnson John Rose, is encouraged by the level of participation displayed by stakeholders during last week's crisis management workshop. I was very impressed with the degree of competitiveness that occurred between teams. Every team wants to outdo the other team, and that is what it was all about. I was pleased with the commitment that everyone put into it. Those who couldn't be here every single day were so apologetic. Oh, I, I really am sorry I can't be here every day, or I can't be here for people who were missing just half an hour. That shows a level of commitment to this, and I can leave here quite confident and comfortable that at least this group, and so the Ministry of Tourism, and the Tourist Board, and everyone, and all the stakeholders are much better prepared to deal certainly with the communication in the event there is a crisis and as the PS said in your own local situation. John Rose suggested that once the draft document is completed the information will be shared with all stakeholders through a town hall meeting. At the very latest during your tourism month when you've got that week on safety and security that some sort of town hall be held with all of the stakeholders where we can you will have shared it with them before. They would have seen it. But then they all can come together and discuss it and what, what not to ensure that they are all on board. The Caribbean Tourism Organization CTO representative has availed himself to provide the Ministry of Tourism with further assistance, if required, in bringing the plan to effect. In other news, the planned protection officer Ryan Ansem says Efforts to manage the citrus greening disease are effective. Speaking to GIS on Tuesday, Ansem briefly discussed the island's status in the fight against the disease. The disease itself is very dangerous. What's make it very dangerous is that it is transmitted by the vector called the Asian citrus silid. And that silid, what we have found, all over Dominica is that the silent population is very low and that speaks well for Dominica in the management strategy. The disease is in four locations. It's in the south, the southeast, the north and the northeast. The plant protection officer also explained that a multifaceted approach has been adopted to protect Dominica's entire citrus production industry. One phase of the strategy is government's citrus certification program, which he says is well managed and effective. He went on to describe the other facets of the strategy. The Ministry of Agriculture, with assistance from the extension unit, what we have done, engage the farmer, engage the backyard, planters, those that have um, citrus in the backyard, to cut down all infested trees. So the, the first strategy is to eliminate the disease material, which is trees infested with positive with um, citrus greening. We have successfully done that in the South Point Michel, and we will continue to do that um, eradication process in eliminating all infested trees. We have also collaborated with the University of Florida in providing parasitoids. They have provided four strains of Tamarixia, which is the natural enemy, small parasitoids to fight against the vector. And we have released about 40,000 of these parasitoids island-wide to control the vector. The parasitoids are insects which will naturally sterilize the citrus greening vector to prevent its reproduction. The island received four parasitoid strains for release from Asia, Florida, Vietnam, and Pakistan. Ansem had strong words of caution for farmers and persons who casually grow citrus plants. Do not move planting material without the permission of the Plant Protection and Quarantine Services. We're asking you to engage us, talk to us, do not buy from any private nurseries. By doing that, you put the country at risk. The private nursery has no capacity in giving you a true to type disease free material. The Ministry of Agriculture, we have invested millions of dollars.
developing what we call a citrus certification project. And that program is to guarantee the farmer that the farmer is getting a true to type and we can guarantee that the planting material is free of any diseases. And we're talking about um, tristeza, um, citrus greening and other pests of citrus. So it's important for everybody to come on board in this program, the farmers, the hawksters, extensionists, everybody involved. Because we have a sector to protect. Citrus is a, a vibrant industry. Farmers can still make money out of citrus. And the strategy really is to maintain our production level, increase it, and to provide incomes for rural areas and for, for export earnings also. He also appealed to citrus growers to cooperate and to only purchase material from citrus certified vendors, since there is no actual cure for the citrus greening disease. Anthem stated that the important steps are to control the vector, destroy infected material, and control the spread. Meanwhile, the future looks positive for the island's fight against the citrus greening disease, which was first intercepted on the island last April. We have a very good chance of eradicating the disease. Some expert has um, recommended that, that if we move quickly and we get the resources to eliminate all infested. By elimination, we're talking about cutting and injecting the, 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 the stem with a herbicide to kill it. So again, um, we have a program in um, Point Michel that we're trying to eliminate all backyard citrus um, trees and leave the area clear of citrus for about a year and start a, 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 a program that will help us eliminate the disease island-wide. Ansem also commented on the issue of the black Sigatoka disease, which causes smaller fruit development in banana and plantain crops. He also stated that an integrated pest management program has been adopted by government to control the spread and impact of the black Sigatoka. We have four main strategies, um, which is sanitation. The other strategy would be nutrition. And going around the island, you will see our production is lacking nutrition. By nutrition, I mean the fertilizer, um, both um, organic and inorganic fertilizer. The plants are lacking um, fertilizer, so we, we are really hoping that we can get some fertilizer very soon, that it will boost up the, the plants in terms of the plants will be able to withstand the disease. The last strategy is application of a chemical. The Ministry of Agriculture is in the third spraying cycle and has so far successfully sprayed 2,238 acres of crop. One of the most important aspects of the Black Sikatoka Management Program is the proper deleafing of infected plants. We're asking the farmers to, 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 to go out in the field on a weekly basis and do the deleafing. Deleafing is very important in controlling Black Sikatoka. We want to emphasize um, the leafing very much because it is the number one strategy in, in, in eliminating or reducing the inoculation in the field. So we're asking the farmers to, to, to pay attention to the deleafing program, the sanitation, getting rid of the weeds, um, their drainage, their spacing, the density. That is important in um, controlling black cigatooka. Refrain from moving leafing material, trash. Um, traditionally, farmers would use the trash as a cushion to bring their planting and bananas to their market. That self is of high risk. Um, you can transport the disease or transfer um, the disease from one area to another, an area that is infested to a non-infested area. The agriculture official emphasized that farmers must intensify deleafing exercises. We want the farmers to go on a, on a, on a radical deleafing program. And when they deleaf, um, not um, just deleaf and leave the leaf, we're telling them to turn the leaf upside down. By doing that, um, the spores that is going to spoil it and, and fly away, it will, it will go down in the, in, in the soil. Okay, the, the program again is saying um, that not only deleafing, but it, it has to be a scientific way where you manicure you cut portion of the leaf that is infested. For example, if the plant um, has bunched, what we're asking you to prove, the plant did about eight to 10 leaves 
to, prov to give you a, a sizable bunch, a marketable bunch. So what we are saying is to, at that stage, we want you to manicure, um, do some surgery, cut the infested leaves. In addition to de-leafing, government continues to hold training sessions for farmers while visiting farms to monitor the management of the black sea katoka. Ansem says in order to rid the island of the dangerous disease, which is three times more aggressive than the yellow sea katoka, consistent and diligent scrutiny by both farmers and government must be maintained. The protection officer cautioned that the banana cultivation is still very significant to Dominica's economy and must not be ignored. Banana is very important and I know a lot of Dominicans like the broth. Um, we have to protect our industry and um, banana is, is, is still an important crop for Dominica. We're talking about our food security and we can still export banana. So we have to do what we have to do to protect that industry. And Sam believes government has done well in its immediate and focused approach to the agricultural threat that is the Black Sea Katoka. In more news, after serving as Venezuela's ambassador to Dominica for the past 12 years, Her Excellency Carmen Martinez de Grialva is returning to her homeland. A special reception was hosted in her honor on Monday at the Fort Young Hotel. The event was attended by His Excellency the President of Dominica, Eliud Williams, and Mrs. Williams, Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, former President Dr. Nicholas Liverpool and Mrs. Liverpool, members of Cabinet, and friends and family of the Ambassador. Prime Minister Skerritt says the Venezuelan diplomat has played a lead role in developing greater relations between Dominica and Venezuela. She was always concerned about ensuring that Dominica um, is given the kind of attention that it now receive, is re receiving from Venezuela. But <clears throat> the fact remains we could always rely on Ambassador for her support and for intervention. In Her Excellency's remarks at Monday's reception, she spoke of her love for Dominica and vowed to continue fostering greater relations between Dominica and Venezuela. Behold this position, we are just mere circumstance. And what really matters is our sense of commitment, is this case our foreign policy, a sovereign, democratic, participative, and integrational foreign policy. Let by Commander Hugo Chavez, whom I have, I have had the honor, the great honor to represent for 12 years in this country. GIS News will bring you a full report on Monday's reception in Wednesday's newscast. Moving along, social programs implemented by the Ministry of Education have had major impacts on the lives of young people and their families. Hyacinth addressing the official opening ceremony of a bottleneck analysis workshop on Tuesday noted that the school feeding program has resulted in increased enrollment in many of the island schools. 40 schools are currently part of the school feeding program and the names are all listed there, 19, there are 20, a government, three are co in collaboration with the Lamb's Feast, and two are with the Kono Foundation, and six with a Swiss agency. The total number of beneficiaries is 1,900 students, and this has resulted in increased students' attendance. In some communities over the years, we recognized that there had been a decline in students' attendance at school. When they come in the morning, they would not return in the afternoon. And through the introduction of the school feeding program, we have seen increased enrollment at these schools. Hyacinth also spoke of some of the achievements of programs like the School Transfer Grant and the Education Trust Fund. The Education Trust Fund and School Transfer Grant, 795 students receive student grant, transfer grant of $500 each. CXE fees for 107 students from seven secondary schools were paid. And so that takes care of some areas where we recognize students need the support and we had to provide them. 260 students from 14 secondary schools received textbooks assistance 
and during September to December 2012, transportation assistance was provided for 134 students. We had some school contribution fees that were paid in respect of 84 students at our schools. The transportation scheme, 63 private bus drivers have been contracted under the scheme and they travel around the island to ensure that students arrive at school on time. And out of that, 1,782 students are benefiting from this experience. And that's the English News. Maxis in St. Louis is next with the Creole Highlights. Hello, everyone. Bienvenue à ce nouvel en Creole. No moins c'est Maxis in St. Louis. Premièrement, ancien ambassadeur Venezuela pour Dominique Excellency Carmen Martinez de Grijalba, qui a venu au bout de travail en Dominique. Ambassador de Grijalba qui travaille ici pour 12 années, qui a quitté ce même a ce compte gouvernement Dominique, ambassadeur pour Venezuela, Dr. Phil Bud Aaron, qui a remercié Martinez de Grijalba pour continuer le travail qu'il fait en Dominique en ces 12 années là. Il dit ambassadeur de Grijalba travaille bien web, développé bon relation là qui a existé entre ces deux pays là. Dominique Chen en réception en l'honneur de Grijalba, lady au souhait. En d'autres nouvelles, l'association Manufacturers Dominique qui y une fois encore organisée par Local Extravaganza pour célébration de masse Dominique l'année 2013. M. Severin Mackenzie, c'est officier de relations publiques pour l'association Manufacturers Dominique. C'est pas tout le monde qui a fait, tout le monde qui a fait ça, nous a fait. Nous avons une association Manufacturers Dominique. Nous sommes d'accord, nous n'y pouvons faire. Nous ne pouvons faire d'hommes ni chien savent qui ça nous qui ça nous a fait. Et avec pas ni compte faire ils savent qui ça nous a fait. Aussi gagner ça nous a fait. Puis là, là on mon café du thé d'hommes ni qui a employé un jeune monde d'hommes ni. Et avec l'argent c'est mon jeune monde l'a fait. Car il y a il y a gagné un bitin un d'hommes ni même pour pour aider l'économie. Quand ça ça nous d'accord si mais n'en est pas passé un mois décembre. Mais nous garder la situation, nous d'accord, nous allons organiser ça, nous couiller. Bail Dominica, shopping, extravaganza, gagner bagaille Dominique. Avec nous, parler avec ces gens-là à la place aux autres, avec nous d'accord. Um, avec eux, apprécier le mouvement-là, nous avons fait. Avec uh, l'hiver, avec l'hiver. 21, 21, en décembre, nous sommes à la place Dominique avec des choses marché bien. Avec ce monde-là qui a participé à la Dominique programme, là, sommes d'accord, nous allons faire encore un cours pour le carnaval. Comme ça, c'est pour, pour ça que nous sommes ici aujourd'hui, nous avons fait préparation pour tout ça, nous allons pour 5 jours. Mercredi le 6, jeudi le 7, vendredi le 8, samedi 9, avec un mercredi après le carnaval, H. Wednesday, le 13 février. Dominique et puis Costa Rica, c'est un changement pour plus de coopération qui concerne les affaires écouteurs. Agrément de coopération, ça l'a la semaine passée. Pendant une délégation pays salante qui a visité Costa Rica qui a assisté Dominique en bagaille capacité écotouriste, bagaille technique et puis il a aussi organisé voyage entre ces deux pays. Le ministère de Commodité, Honorable Dr. John Colin McIntyre, ensemble et puis le ministère de Tourisme, Honorable Ian Douglas, aussi tient une discussion et puis délégation Costa Rica pendant une visite pour ces pays. Et puis finalement, la division pêche de l'Omnique programme pour tous les pêcheurs en pays. Ils ont aussi été invités à pêcher l'autre pays, visiter ici, taper tout le Par contre, cela a sorti l'autre officier de division pêche de l'Omnique, M. Norman Norris. L'année passée, 2012, nous avons eu trois régional programmes. Ça veut dire que 
programme nous même fait Dominique a été un succès nous menait Moon Hot Saint Kitts Nevis Antigua Saint Lucia Saint Vincent Grenada pour venir Dominique et faire apprendre ça nos cafés pour nous aider au pire y en dit c'était pour faire et puis et puis Diamondback Squid là il était là et nous 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 poste là nous nous participant Hot Region là les les autres Dominique cafés programme cela pour y en semaine nous nous te fait quelque chose Hodam ghost fishing, ça c'est les ou les on as, non les les on as perdu, n'as ça pas perdu, mais les en bas gloire il a continué tuer des poissons, il veut tuer des poissons, comme ça nous tenions un successful programme puis ça nous fait au papier scientifique, il veut moi-même te présenter ça, peut-être trois années passées à dans international scientific conference avec nous mener um fishers officers au regional pour venir pour ça nous qu'a fait pour eux-mêmes ça fait quelque chose comme ça. Mesdames et Messieurs, ça c'est tout pour nos nouvelles en créole pour à présent. Non, moi c'est Macpherson Saint Louis. Au revoir. Thank you, Macpherson. Learn how to live a more productive life in our national focus tip of the day coming up after this. To live a more productive and proficient life, practice your ABCs. A. Avoid negative people, negative habits, and negative sources of information. B. Believe in yourself and your closest confidence. And C. Create a healthy balance between career, family, and social responsibilities. And that's all for National Focus today. We welcome your suggestions and comments. Please feel free to drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website at news.gov.dm. Friend us on our Facebook page and be sure to like our GIS Dominica fan page. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube page. On behalf of the entire news production team, I'm Pearl Fontaine. Thank you for watching.